Hey guys, welcome back to another week's episode. Today is finally the day when the car is registered and it's now good to be on the road. I'm super excited to have it as my daily and begin the six month challenge uh, where I'm going to be having this and my four wheel drive and see whether it actually works out better to have a small car and a four wheel drive instead of a four wheel drive as a daily um, and on weekends and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's basically on the road. If you guys are interested in the costs um, of, you know, working it up from the day I bought it, which was a thousand dollars till now, everything that I've done, uh, let me run you through everything I've done to the car and how much it costs. And just so you guys know if you're interested. So yeah, let's quickly do that. Alrighty guys, so let's get into the costs associated with this car. Now, if you're interested in all the parts that I bought, make sure to check out the previous video um, just right here. So um, yeah, I'm basically just gonna go over the mechanical costs. Keep in mind guys, if you do most of the work yourself, it's gonna work out way cheaper. Um, it's just gonna take some time, which I don't have. I'm busy seven days a week. So I literally bought the car and sent it straight to Ford Holden and 4x4 Wrecking, which is in the Brisbane North area, um, just so they can do everything. All right, so just a quick reminder, I bought the car for $1,000. I spent $300 on all the parts. It is very cheap because I do get stuff that's going with Repco. So just keep that in mind. If you bought the same parts, it's probably going to cost retail about $800. So just keep that in mind. Ford Holden and 4x4 Wrecking. So I supplied all the parts. Here's what they did. So they did the clutch kit, the rear main seal, the timing valve, plus a new water pump. They did the rocker cover gasket and they also topped up the gearbox oil, engine oil and engine oil filter is also brand new. And then the additional parts that I didn't budget for, but sometimes it happens where there's things that you don't see up front, uh, such as the flywheel needed machining, which is 65 bucks. And the car also needed a new crank angle sensor because it melted away because on the car, it's like next to the exhaust kind of thing. So it's a common thing on the gets apparently. That was 75 bucks. Um, but all up, guys, I only spent $790 for everything. So that is so affordable. And although you might think it is a wreck yard, they do have a mechanic on site and they do mechanical services every day, like clutch kits, that sort of thing. So make sure to check them out, especially if you're on a budget, you don't have a lot of money. Um, Make sure to check them out. The car is perfect. The clutch is awesome. There's no oil leaks. And I've been there many times um, because they just do an awesome job. It's very affordable. So um, super stoked. So yeah, guys, basically 1,000 plus 300 for um, the parts is 1,300 plus 790 for the labor is $2,090 and then plus roadworthy. I did get probably the most expensive $110 from Lube Mobile. Um, but yeah, the car passed it. So all up $2,200, guys, um, which is an absolute bargain for this car. Um, you know, keep in mind a new clutch, a new timing belt. So you're good for another 100,000 kilometers, which in my case, I only do about 10,000 here. So that's another 10 years that it's good for. So 2,200 for me, if it was retail, it would cost you $3,000 for this car, which in my opinion is still very affordable and for a car that has like new tires, new clutch, new timing belt, water pump, the works. So yeah, overall I'm very stoked and yeah, there you go. The car's on the road, good to go. Uh, but yeah guys, let's get into today's video on what I actually wanna do to this car. This is a personal preference, the car doesn't need it, but it does need it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Alrighty, so there's basically just one more problem with this car. Um, you, you don't have to do this, uh, but in my opinion, if you're gonna be driving this car every single day, you need a good sound system, all right? Uh, currently, I think the speakers are sort of blown or something. There's a lot of distortion and there's absolutely no bass at all. Um, so yeah, I reckon it's definitely worth upgrading the speakers. Um, I just got them from Repco as well. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have the same brands uh, in stock. So I just went with the JVC 6.5 inch and then also some Pioneers, which is also 6.5 inch. Um, so yeah, we're basically just going to be installing some speakers today just so it's a lot more drivable. <laughs> uh, just to listen some, to some nice music while we're driving, right? 
um, because uh, I reckon these speakers currently are absolutely rooted and um, yeah, definitely needs to change. So yeah, let's get into the installation of some speakers. So it's pretty evident that this speaker is absolutely blown to bits. Um, so yeah, there's absolutely no woofer left of this thing. So <laughs> that explains why it was so crap. So yeah, pretty excited. Uh, let's get it out. And um, yeah, we'll basically just cut the wires and then um, mount it to the near wires of the new speakers. Um, and yeah, just go from there. We're basically going to go with the JVC speakers um, over the Pioneer for the front just because it has a 45 watt RMS, which is basically the continuous power it's going to have, whereas the Pioneer has a 40 watt um, RMS, but they both peak at 300 watts. So it's pretty good. This one is just a bit more powerful without running an amp through it, obviously. So yeah, that's going to go in the front and the Pioneer is going to go in the back. Alrighty guys, so it comes with the wires, so all you gotta do is blind it back a bit and then just unbolt the old speaker from this casing and then basically what you wanna do is solder these wires together like that and then I'm also just gonna put some heat shrink on it just so it's nice and secure and then that just goes straight in like that and then yeah, it just bolts back so it's very easy to do and also just to correct myself guys, um, the JVC is 50 watts RMS and the Pioneer is 40. Um, so yeah, there's a 10 watt difference. So yeah, definitely the JVC will be going in the front and the Pioneer in the back. So yeah, let's all of them together and yeah, put it back. Awesome, so once the speaker is in, make sure um, it's all nice and tight just so there won't be any rattles. And also after every speaker, just make sure to turn on your radio to see if sound is coming through or not. And just to make sure you've got positive to positive and negative to negative. Awesome, so we just finished the front, so it's now time to tackle the rear. Um, so we're basically just gonna do the same thing, take the panels off and then take the speakers out and put the new ones in. All right, unfortunately it does look like we need to take the seats out, so we're just basically gonna unbolt it, take it out, 
to get to the panels. Um, it's a bit annoying, but it's all right. It's not hard at all. So yeah, it just takes a bit of extra time. That's all. Let's get into it. Yeah. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, the back speaker is also stuffed. Um, so yeah, we're basically just going to put the Pioneer in. There is a tiny bit of a um, difference in size, so we'll just have to make it work. I'm just going to bend back this frame a little bit, just so it doesn't vibrate against the trim at the back because it is bigger. Um, so basically what I've done is just drilled some new holes through it just for the screws to go through, which is supplied with the speakers. So basically just gonna put it in like that. And then, yeah, it should be all good. All you have to do is just cut the wires here, and then same deal, just solder it in with the new wires from the speaker. guys finally done so let's have a listen shall we and see whether it's actually worth upgrading the speakers um so yeah i guess let's test it out Awesome guys, well there you have it. It is sounding very good in the gets right now. I'm so glad all the speakers that were blown are out because as you saw, it's pretty pretty hard to watch. But yeah, it's now sounding very great. It's uh, very nice and rich, the sound. it's uh, The clarity is definitely there. I would say if you're chasing a lot of bass, then this is definitely not a setup to go for. I would rather put in a subwoofer into the car because if you max out the bass settings on the head unit, the speakers don't sound that great at all so yeah just make sure to um, get a subwoofer for that otherwise if you're just chasing clarity 
or if your speakers are blown like mine then definitely do the upgrade thanks for watching guys make sure if you have any questions to pop it down below and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one peace out <laughs>